Good morning. Good morning. And a Merry Christmas to you. Welcome to our worship service. Uh, we are doing our announcements before the worship service begins so that we have a little more time for that. <coughs> uh, I'm going to ask you if you have cell phones to please make sure that those are turned off or on the silent mode. Uh, a reminder, those of you who are here this morning who are being the scripture readers in the 7 o'clock service tomorrow evening, I would like to meet with you immediately after the service this morning uh, just to, you know, clear signals. We're not going to have a run through or anything, but I just want to meet with you uh, to go through some briefings on that. Uh, meetings and activities this week. Uh, tomorrow is Christmas Eve. And we're having a special service for uh, children that will be at 5 o'clock. It'll be a very nice, sort of an informal service. And I've done this in several churches now over the years, and people with children just love it. So if you have children, or you are children, come at 5 o'clock. Uh, our traditional service, candlelight service of lessons and carols will be at 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow. The church office will be closed on Christmas and the day following Christmas. So that's Tuesday and Wednesday that the church office will be closed. And uh, after the offering this morning, the children will come back from Sunday school and they will receive their gifts, and there are gifts for all of the children that are currently under the tree. This is only for the children who've been good, however. <laughs> so we want to check, make sure. I asked Daniel if he'd been good, and he said this whole last week <laughs> that, that he's been good. And I says, can you make it for two? And he gritted his teeth a little bit on that one. <laughs> uh, and that's all I have. Announcements. There you go. I bring greetings from uh, Jean Cruz in Ohio. She's out of the hospital. She's home. And she's got a couple more procedures to be done. There's a couple of those procedures. Uh, we should be down here at the end of uh, January. But she wants to thank everybody for their referrals and cards and concerns. Excellent. For those of you who maybe didn't hear that, Dee Cruz is out of the hospital in Ohio. She's back home. Uh, she has some more procedures to go through, but she is coming along. So we are so glad for that. Uh, where's Norma? Norma, do you have announcements? Wow. They were picked up on Tuesday. Wow. And Wonderful. And we, we thank all of the women, and we thank you, Norma, for coordinating that and putting that all together. Other announcements? Can't believe it. <laughs> all right. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. Imogene is just going to play some nice Christmas music for us. And we're just going to stand up and greet each other, and we've got some time now to do that. So greet one another and just say, you know, Merry Christmas and hello and so on and so forth. Don't you guys move. <laughs> Somebody locked the screen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. 
Got tired of being friendly, huh? Okay. <laughs> Let me give you the official welcome to our worship service this morning, now that the 10 o'clock hour is upon us. And a very special welcome to anyone who is here who is visiting us with us this morning. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at the Northport Community United Church of Christ. If you haven't already begun the friendship book, you'll find that there is a red book on the end of the pew towards the center aisle, and we ask you to please take that, open it, and sign your name to it and pass it through to everyone in your row. If you are visiting us, we'd like you to give us your home address, and if you live here in the area, we also like it if you would give us a phone number and or an email because we like to respond to you and let you know how glad we were that you were here with us this morning. And keep the book open when it gets to the end and pass it back towards the center aisle and look and see who else is sitting with you this morning. <clears throat> and then at the conclusion of the service, everyone is invited over to the fellowship hall where we continue with our fellowship <laughs> and greeting each other over there. Except for those of you who are scripture readers in tomorrow's service, I want you here first and then you can go over. <laughs> Do we have any visitors here who this is their first time to be here? Norma, you're pointing yep. somewhere. Okay, uh, we have something for you. So if you're a first time visitor, Raise your hand, right over here. Some on the other side. Over there, okay. Let us be in worship.
Soon we shall celebrate the birth of Jesus. We worship God with joy in our hearts. As we are reminded of the words the angel said on the first Christmas day, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all of the people. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With this coming of this light, there is joy. Joy that is ours, not on Christmas, but always. O oh, Holy One, as Christmas draws near, there is a sense of excitement in the air. We can feel a joy in our lives and see it in those around us. Still, for some of us, this is a sad time because of unhappy things that have happened in our lives. Help us to have the joy that does not depend on earthly happiness, but on you. Help us to be filled with your joy so that we may share it with a joyless world. Amen. Let us stand and join in singing our opening carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <clears throat>
I begin the litany of approach and prayer. Now hear this, all who seek God. God is here. Let us break forth in shouts of praise and songs of joy. Our hearts reach out for God today. Join in the opening prayer. Eternal God, we rejoice in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Help us to go as wise men to Bethlehem. Enable us to worship there as humble shepherds filled with wonder of his birth. Send us forth to bear witness to what we have seen and heard. Amen. reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoke to her by the Lord. Here ends the reading of the New Testament Gospel. <coughs>
Go down in a row. Fall down. I invite you all down to their room down there for I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, squeeze, squeeze in here. We got, we can get two more in here. There's no problem there. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. What a problem. <laughs> get close. Remember, we all love one another. Now, come on. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start these at this end, and I hope there's enough for everyone. I, it, it's good that you're here because I want you to focus for a minute on all those packages that are under the tree. And those are for you. Yeah. So, you like that? Yeah. You like presents? Yeah. Are you going to get any on Christmas? Yeah. How many more weeks until Christmas? No more weeks! Oh my gosh. You mean my shopping days are all gone? <laughs> Three days. Three days. Wow. How many hours, Daniel? <laughs> I'm sure you could work it out. Yeah. <laughs> Two more days. Yeah. So Christmas is about to come. And are you starting to get a little excited? Yeah. Yeah. It's called anticipation. You're anticipating Christmas coming. Yeah. I want to tell you a story this morning about Mary, Joseph's mother, as she was anticipating giving birth to Jesus. And while she was waiting for the birth of Jesus, she was nervous and she was worried because this would be her first child. And a lot of people think that Mary was just a teenager, so she was not very old. And she had a dream, however, and she wasn't sure, but what maybe it really wasn't a dream, that it really did happen. But in this dream, or in this what really happened, an angel came to Mary and said, Mary, don't worry. The baby that you're going to have is God's child and will be very, very special and is going to bring love and peace and well-being to all people. And Mary thought, Wow. And so she decided that she needed to go and visit with somebody else who was also going to have a child, and that was her older cousin, Elizabeth. And we heard about Elizabeth a few weeks ago because Elizabeth was Zechariah's wife, and Zechariah was the one that couldn't talk. Remember that? Yeah, he couldn't talk while she was pregnant. And so. Mary went to see Elizabeth. And here they were, these two women who were both going to have babies. And Mary, the young woman, perhaps a teenager, and Elizabeth was an older woman who was past the time when it was even expected that she would be able to have a child. And here they both were about to give birth and they talked to each other, and they gave comfort to each other. And when Mary was showing up, the baby in Elizabeth's womb jumped, the Bible tells us, as though the baby was excited inside of her to see Mary coming, carrying her baby. And 
Elizabeth reached out and she put her hand on Mary's dummy and she felt her baby, Jesus, jump. And she says, wow, Mary, God has really blessed us both with babies that are going to grow up to be very important people. And Mary was so happy she broke into a song. And it's a song that had been passed down through the Jewish people for generations and generations. And it was first sung by Hannah, way, way back in the Old Testament. And Hannah was Samuel's mother, prophet. But Mary picked up the song, and we now call it Mary's song. And in that song, Mary said, I am happy. I am joyful for the one who will be born will welcome the poor and give them good things and the rich will be turned away. God will bless the people with the one who comes. And you can read that song in the scripture that is included in your little bulletin that you have there this morning, and plus all the games. And so Mary was excited as she waited for her baby to be born, in much the same way that you are excited about the gifts that you're going to be able to uh, receive. Now, while we're talking about gifts, I have something else for you. Don't go away. <laughs> My wife, Catherine, has some books that she's going to donate to our church library. But before they get to the library, I'm going to give them to you this morning. And I want you to take them with you and each choose one that you would like to take home for the next few days because they're all Christmas related books, okay? I'm gonna give them to your teacher, to Matt, and he's gonna take them along, and while you're in Sunday school, you can look them through and choose the one that you would like to take. And when you're finished with it, and there's no big hurry on it, but when you're finished with it, just bring it back and we'll put it in the church library, okay? Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for Christmas and for the excitement that we feel and the anticipation of gifts. But we thank you mostly for the gift of Jesus who comes to show us love and give us joy. Amen. Okay, you can go to Sunday school. Before I begin the reading of the Old Testament lesson, I have to say how emotional I became when I heard those little children singing. I was ready to cry for joy. God bless them and God bless all those who nurture them and take so much time in being with them. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading is taken from Micah chapter five, verses two through five. But you, O Bethlehem, of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, 
and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament lesson. This morning, I want to tell you a story. The story is based on truth, for it could happen at any one of a hundred and perhaps thousands of churches anywhere. The names, the place, and the event have all been changed to make the story more interesting. The whole story of the Christmas pageant really began precisely 47 years ago. In fact, 47 Christmases ago. Because it was 47 years ago when Albina Johnson first directed First Congregational's annual children's Christmas pageant. This was something she would continue to do through 10 pastors, nine U.S. presidents, three wars, and who knows how many Christian education committees for the next 46 years, but not this year. <coughs> and that's the story. International alliances came and went, wars were fought and peace made, ministers were called and then called away, but Albina Johnson directing the annual children's Christmas pageant was like a great rock in a stormy sea. Now, one might call Albina stubborn, but that word is just not quite enough. Alvina is an immovable object. She is one of those people who is always right like your worst nightmare of your worst school teacher. When folks around here get put out with Alvina, who is disguised as a sweet and soft 70-year-old lady, they refer to her under their breath, of course, as the Iron Butterfly. But Alvina does what she says, always, exactly, and forever. 47 years ago, somebody asked her if she would do the Christmas pageant. And she said yes. They didn't say, Alvina, would you do it this year? So Alvina, who is a literalist in all things, assumed they meant forever. And she is a woman of her word. Alvina's pageants always had precisely nine characters. One Mary, one Joseph, three wise men, of course, two shepherds, one angel, and one narrator. The script was simply the story out of the King James Bible, which meant that two six-year-old shepherds had to learn to say, let us go now even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass that the Lord hath made known to us. Albina's goal was nothing less than perfection for Christmas pageantry. Perfect lines, perfect pacing, blocking, enunciation, perfect everything, which is not easily achieved with little children, even nine carefully selected ones. Time and again, people tried to get Alvina to open things up and let every kid who wanted have a part. But Alvina would say, 
Scripture says there were a heavenly host. Now, people would say to Albina, Albina, the scripture says there were a heavenly host, not just one lonely angel. Albina, why not a few more shepherds? Then everyone could be in the pageant. Albina, if there were shepherds, there were sheep, right? We'll make some cute little woolly outfits for the three and four year olds. Nope. She would answer, too many youngsters, too many problems. Some people suspected that Albina didn't really like children. Early in the fall of this <coughs> particular year, however, something happened which changed the course of history of how it had always been done for nearly half a century. You see, the Christian Education Committee had the three young mothers of last year's rejected Mary, Joseph, and wise man number two. And these young mothers pulled off what they call in Central America a coup d'etat. <laughs> At their September meeting, they passed the following motion. Let it be known, all children who wish to be in the Christmas pageant may do so. Parts will be found. Albina heard about it that night, and she was in my office next morning at 9 o'clock sharp. She began by asking me if I thought that last year's decorations on the Christmas tree in the church parlor were the kind that ought to be there. I had noticed them, I said. She informed me that they were nothing more than walnut shells decorated to look a little like mice with stocking caps on their heads. <laughs> what, she asked, do little mice have to do with the birth of our Lord. Now, I knew this wasn't the problem. I too had heard about the committee meeting the night before. What's the matter, Alvina, I asked. Young mothers, she said. She spit those words out, young mothers, like it were an illicit occupation. Young mothers, she continued, who have no knowledge or experience in the proper direction of a Christmas pageant. Young mothers are behind those walnut shell mice, and they're behind the destruction of the Christmas pageant. She then resigned as the director and said, these young mothers think they know so much, then let them do it. She was angry. Maybe even angry enough to quit the church and go up the street and become a Methodist. <laughs> but she didn't. I suspect that she wanted to hang around at least long enough to see the young mothers fall fat, flat on their faces. Well, the pageant went off and the young mothers didn't fall flat on their faces. But the pageant was, well, different from what everybody had come to expect over the last 46 years. It seemed as though there were a cast of thousands, although the actual number were 50 or so, which was every kid in the church up to the eighth grade. At that age, they would sooner die than get dressed up in their father's bathrobes and pretend to be a biblical character. <laughs> there must have been a dozen shepherds and ten angels, which is pretty close to a heavenly host. And then there might be what was considered a mistake in ambitious planning by new directors. You see, there were sheep. Ah, not real ones, although that may have been better. <laughs> These sheep were a couple of dozen three, four, and five-year-olds who had on woolly fake sheepskin vests, cute little hoods, and their dad's black socks pulled up over their arms and legs. 
The pageant was a lot of things, but smooth wasn't one of these. <laughs> and one of the chief problems, quite honestly, was the sheep. These kids were farm kids, and they knew that sheep are pretty dumb, and they're not very well behaved. <laughs> so when the young mothers casually asked these two dozen sheep to act like sheep, they really should have known better. <laughs> Some of the sheep decided to go grazing behind the communion table. Some wandered off to the choir to graze, and, and some went down the center aisle, and some of them had found donuts that they'd found in the church parlor that made the grazing look even more realistic. <laughs> and when one of the shepherds tried to herd them a bit with his shepherd's crook, the sheep started to spook and scattered just like real sheep do. Everybody knows how sheep act, so it was a remarkable imitation of real sheep, even though a little out of the ordinary for the usual indoor church Christmas pageant. Now, Alvina was watching all of this from the last pew in the sanctuary, and I could just see her from where I was sitting as the sheep spooked and scattered while they made noises like real sheep do. Bah, bah. Albina looked down to hide a smirk. Young mothers, I'm sure she was thinking. If they know so much, let them try to direct the Christmas pageant. The real climax of it all came, however, at the point of high drama when Mary and Joseph enter. Mary was clutching a doll in a blanket. This year's Mary, was name, whose name actually was Mary, was taking her role with an intense and pious seriousness. She looked into the face of the doll in her arms with eyes that really seemed to see the face of the infant Jesus. However, Joseph was another story. He had gotten the part because he had been refused the part in previous Christmas pageants by Alvina Johnson more times than any kid in the church. Anyway, Mary and Joseph were to walk to the front, up the center aisle, as the narrator read, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, called Bethlehem, to be taxed with his espoused wife, being great with child. At least that's what the narrator was supposed to read. This is what the narrator had read during the rehearsals. But a few hours before the performance, one of the young motors noted that none of these youngsters spoke the King James English. And they really couldn't understand it. So they voted in their ongoing mood of revolutionary fervor to switch to the Good News translation of the Bible for their performance. What kid knows what great with child means, they asked. The good news translation is much more direct at this point. So Mary and Joseph entered the sanctuary. As the reader read, Joseph went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant. At that last word, it echoed from the narrator through the PA system to the full church. Our little Joseph, hearing it, froze in his tracks, looked at Mary with total disbelief and surprise, peered at the congregation and said, Pregnant! <laughs> and this, of course, brought the house down. I was sitting next to the lay reader who, while wiping tears of laughter from her eyes, whispered to me and said, you know, that may well be what Joseph actually did say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Alvina was now sitting back there with a look that broadcast, I told you so. But as the pageant moved into its closing tableau and the church lights were dimmed for the singing of Silent Night, a couple of magical, I would even say miraculous, things happened. When the sheep had finished with their part and, their, and bleated their way down the center aisle, they went and sat in the last couple of pews to watch the end of the pageant. Now Alvina was in the last pew and she suddenly found herself surrounded by a herd of little three, four, and five-year-olds in sheep outfits. It was late, it was warm, and the sheep were drowsy. I glanced at Ovina as the wise men were kneeling and the organ was playing the strains of Silent Night. The sheep in the pew on either side of Alvina had fallen asleep and were resting their fake woolly heads on her shoulders, which they would be comfortable doing with any grown-ups in our church. And as the church went dark for the singing of Silent Night, we could see what had been happening outside for the last hour. The first real snowfall of winter was falling. Big flakes, fat flakes, floated down and covered everything with a white uniform perfection. As we, little kids and grown-ups, watched, there was a spontaneous and corporate, ah, uh, we sang Silent Night, Holy Night. All is calm, all is bright. It was very softly that we sang, and all the sheep were very quiet, even the ones that were awake, while everybody looked at the snow. It was as if flakes of grace were falling, falling free out of heaven, and blessing the muddy earth with purity, a whiteness covering our shoddiness with perfection. When the carol was finished, no one stirred for a long time. It wasn't planned. We just all sat there, watched. It seemed like an eternity. It was maybe two minutes. Minnie McDowell broke the spell. She's hard of hearing and always talks too loudly. She meant to whisper to her husband, but everybody heard as she said, perfect, just perfect. And so it was. Not perfect in the way that Albina's pageants tried to make things perfect, but perfect in the way that God makes things perfect. God accepts our fumbling attempts at performance, at love and fairness, and then covers them with grace. I think the moment may even have touched the iron butterfly. Many said afterwards that Alvina mentioned to her later that if anyone needed any more sheep outfits for next year, she could perhaps find time to make a few. Let us pray. God of grace, who has so many ways of reminding us that grace trumps perfection every time. May we be aware and open to your grace entering into our lives. And may the meanings of this season be made fresh for us. Even though we don't live here in the land of falling snow, no matter where we live, 
we live with your grace that comes and dwells amongst us. We celebrate the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, into our lives and into the world. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our Christmas carol, The First Noel, number 94. This is a season of celebrations 
until we begin today with anything you would like to share with us that you're celebrating. And while you're thinking, I want to celebrate Imogene's work with the children this morning and pulling that off with the choir. That was absolutely tremendous. Maybe we have the makings of a children's choir. Yeah. The 27th, 92. All right, we celebrate that. Dorothy? Christmas Day. All right, we won't ask you how old DJ, but. No. Mm. <laughs> but somewhere around 39 or 40. Close. <laughs> Say that again. It's, my dad's birthday. it's your dad's birthday tomorrow. Okay. <coughs> I see another hand. Back here. Ninety first birthday on Christmas. Another Christmas. Wow. <laughs> on the twenty sixth. Okay, you obviously were a teenage mother, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, we'll be very glad to have him back, too. Other celebrations? Betty? We're celebrating the fact that our two sons and their wives are going to be with us for Christmas. All right. And on Thursday, we're getting together with their four cousins, and the six cousins have not been together, as far as we can figure, for 23 years. Oh, my. So it's going to be quite a day. <coughs> Wonderful celebration. Yeah. All right. Allie? Yes, Nicole's birthday. And we won't ask her either how old. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Other celebrations? I'd like to celebrate our daughter being here for Christmas from New York City. From New York City. All right. Any other celebrations? Another Christmas Day. Wow. All these Christmas birthdays. Let's just see. Show of hands. All of you here that have birthdays on Christmas Day, raise your hands. Yeah, no neat. Okay. Other celebrations? Okay, Reagan Noel. That's sort of a Christmassy sound, doesn't it? Yeah. Mark? Okay. So all the kids get to spend time together. Yeah. The others. Okay. And we also have concerns. Barbara Neal is back in the hospital in intensive care. Uh, I saw her there yesterday afternoon and she was in a great deal of pain, but somebody saw her or spoke to her daughter yesterday evening and she seemed to be getting some relief. Uh, so we very definitely hold Barbara in our prayers. Norma, somebody said your daughter had a on Wednesday Norma's daughter goes in for some heart surgery in North Carolina. Okay. Other concerns, prayers that you would like this morning? Okay. Barbara? So a friend that's in the hospital, 92 years old, not doing well. And I saw another. Jenny?
So things break down in the house, the blood pressure goes up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Becky? Yes. Just going to say that. Thank you. Yes. All of the families and all of the people that are there and everyone who has connections, and I know several of you do, personal connections, uh, with that terrible, terrible tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut. Uh, the whole nation and the whole world, just as much as possible, is just holding those people in an embrace of comfort. Joe, continued prayers for Ralph. What's that? Continued prayers for Ralph. Yes. And the Continuing prayers for Ralph, yeah. Joe, I also would like to have that extended to anyone who suffered from a tragic accident at the hands of another person, and I'm thinking of Aggie, but she left him. Yeah, so and prayers for died. anyone who has suffered at the hands of another person. Yes. <coughs> Let us be in prayer. Again, a gracious God, we do lift up to you all of our thoughts and prayers. This is a season of people coming together, <coughs> families and friends. It is a time when we know that we are blessed with so much in life itself. And we celebrate all of these birthdays that were mentioned here today. But our thoughts also turn to those who are troubled and hurting, people who are suffering illness and the loss of loved ones, people who are suffering at the tragic hands of others. Be with them. And be with your church as it strives to find ways of reaching out and touching the lives of hurtful people that we might extend your grace through Jesus Christ to everyone. Listen to us now as we bring to you our silent prayers. Now we join our voices in our unison prayer. Our most giving God, as we listen again to stories about this wondrous season, prepare us for receiving the gift of your love revealed fully to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, who came that we might have life and have it in the fullness with which you intended in our creation. Then may we respond with your compassionate love to all who share your creation with us in Jesus' name, amen. Let us now come in the sharing of our gifts.
eternal God is a blessed people who are celebrating the receiving of the most glorious gift ever. We come with these, our gifts, praying that they may help and continue to spread the glorious love and grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated, and we are now going to distribute the gifts to the children on the assumption that they've all been good, and of course they have. <laughs> Yeah, he's back there. Here, I'll take it back to him. That's for you. We miss anyone? All right. Thank you, Allie, for helping with that. Jim didn't get his. Oh. <laughs> Got to be better. <laughs> Okay, let us join in singing our closing carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 97, and please stand if you're able. <laughs> 